In this test I'll be testing the microphone preamp. I've got an electric microphone connected to the input of the microphone preamp and I've got my SA connected to the output of the preamp which is being fed into the SA612. I fed a 1500 Hertz tone into the uh, electric microphone from my phone using a um, tone generator application and then I did a single trace so I just took one trace um, single so that I can capture it because I'm using my phone to film this so you could see it saw three peaks and I'm going from 100 Hertz to 5 kilohertz here uh, that's my bandwidth and I'm seeing three peaks uh, the first peak here it's shown here at uh, 1.5 uh, kilohertz second peaks at 3 kilohertz and second and third peak is at 4.5 kilohertz so all three of those are harmonics and they're probably harmonics from the tone generator it's not a pure sine wave that's coming out of my phone so with this test I'm now going to probe what's coming out of the first SA612 uh, when I've got an audio signal present and when I don't have an audio signal present and I'll be feeding the beat frequency oscillator from my SI5351 uh, clock generator here and as you can see I'm generating 491307 megahertz on clock 1 which is this port here. So here's what the spectrum analyzer is seeing that's coming out of the first uh, SA612. You'll see that there's several peaks along here and keep in mind this is when there's no audio uh, being fed into the microphone so this is just with the uh, BFO uh, frequency of 4.9 megahertz being fed in and you'll see that there I've highlighted four markers and if you look at the markers here one thing you'll notice they're all harmonics of 4.9 this is the second harmonic this is the third harmonic and that's the fourth harmonic and uh, these other peaks will be uh, the, the fifth and the sixth harmonic and that's because uh, we're uh, putting in a square wave and we're seeing all kinds of other um, harmonics uh, coming in from that square wave from the SI5351. This is the spectrum of uh, what's coming out of the SA612 with a 1500 Hz uh, audio signal present. One of the things I had to do here was I had to do a single sweep um, because or a single trace because I'm using my phone to generate the audio tone and as well as I'm using my phone to uh, film this uh, video so I had to do a, a single sweep and capture um, the spectrum so a couple of things to, to note is here's the BFO frequency here the 4.9 megahertz you'll see it's a little bit wider at the bottom and that's because of the audio signal that's now mixing with that but because my resolution is so large it's 3 kilohertz I'm going from 100 Hertz to 30 uh, megahertz. I'm not seeing, I'm not able to resolve those uh, peaks, the sidebands there. And you'll notice that uh, the peaks have all come up a little bit because the audio is now mixing with all the harmonics of the BFO and it's causing the signal to come up a little bit. So with this test, I've moved the spectrum analyzer um, to probe the output of the crystal filter. And I'm not going to feed a tone into the microphone. And let's see what's uh, making it through the uh, crystal filter. So here's the crystal filter spectrum. And you'll see there's nothing uh, coming through. The crystal filter, everything is being attenuated. It looks as if, if there's a little bit of signal from 4.9 megahertz making it through, 
but it's certainly well down close to the noise. Here's a spectrum with a 1500 hertz tone being uh, injected into the microphone and again I had to take a single sweep and you'll see there's one prominent peak at 4.9 megahertz so that's uh, because of the audio mixing with the BFO and it's coming through the crystal filter and you'll see there's absolutely nothing else coming through the crystal filter. With this test the spectrum analyzer is connected to the output of the SA612 and I have got no local oscillator signal being fed into the uh, the uh, SA612 and there's no audio being fed into the microphone. So this is what the spectrum analyzer is seeing uh, that's coming out of the SA612 which is extremely odd because we're seeing the BFO and its harmonics across here. So this is very very odd. We shouldn't be seeing anything coming out of the um, the SA612. So what I believe is happening is that I have got the the um, local oscillator port connected to port 1 of my or port 2 port 0 sorry port 0 of the SI5351 and so I suspect that the uh, BFO frequency on port 1 is bleeding through to port 0 and I'm seeing that. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the uh, local oscillator connection from the SI5351 SIG gen and we'll see what we see on the uh, spectrum analyzer. This is a spectrum we're seeing from the output of the second SA612 with the local oscillator disconnected from the SI5351 SIG gen and you're seeing we're still seeing the BFO frequency here so which means that that frequency must be coming it's bleeding through uh, some trace on the board uh, potentially from a power supply line and uh, there it's, uh, the harmonic just popped up but you see this is going up and down so we're picking that some stray RF up uh, somehow from the uh, uh, the BFO. I'm now feeding the local oscillator frequency from uh, the SI5351 SIGGEN so I'm feeding in a local oscillator frequency of 12015087 uh, um, Hertz into the local oscillator port of the uh, SA612 there's no microphone audio being uh, no audio being fed in into the microphone and uh, let's take a look at what the spectrum analyzer is seeing with no audio being fed into the microphone this is what the spectrum analyzer is seeing that's coming out of the second SA612 you'll see we've got a uh, I put markers here in peak 1 2, 3, and 4, and there's a fifth peak here. But if you go to the marker table, you'll see the first peak is the uh, uh, BFO frequency, which we saw was bleeding through. Then we're seeing the 7.1 uh, megahertz signal, which is the um, local oscillator mixing with the, with the frequency coming through, the signal coming through the... Um, a crystal filter to produce the 7.1 megahertz uh, RF signal that's going to make its way to the bandpass filter and the RF uh, uh, power amp and then these other uh, peaks here these other peaks are mixing byproducts of the um, uh, 12 megahertz signal it's harmonics mixing with the harmonics of the um, um, 4.9 megahertz signal so we're seeing some mixing byproducts here all the way out to about uh, 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 16 megahertz the bandpass filter will uh, attenuate some of these signals for example number three here which is 12 megahertz it's outside of the pass band of the 40 meter bandpass filter so it should knock that down 
and it should knock down these other harmonics here. These mixing byproducts should uh, get knocked down and we should only see the uh, 7.1 megahertz signal making it through. Here's the output spectrum from the second SA612 with a 1500 hertz audio tone being fed into the microphone and uh, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of mixing byproducts here. The markers uh, are still present for the peaks that we saw when there was no audio present. So all these additional peaks are resulting from the audio um, being mixed in to the BFO and into the, um, uh, the LO. So I suspect that uh, all these are um, are resulting from mixing um, of the harmonics of the tone that I'm generating. You saw earlier that the tone is not a pure sine wave and it had harmonics. So I think those harmonics are mixing with the harmonics of the uh, BFO because it's a square wave and as well mixing with the harmonics of the local oscillator which is another square wave and it's producing all these artifacts uh, here. So hopefully the bandpass filter will strip all those out and just keep the real peak here, which is number two, which is the RF, which should be making its way through to the uh, power amplifier. So I've got the spectrum analyzer now connected to the output of the bandpass uh, filter. And the bandpass filter uh, is not connected to the power amp, uh, the uh, trace is actually, there's an air gap and as well I've got a jumper here for the power trace that's going to the final amp, the final power amp here so there's no power going to it because these transistors and the uh, IRF510 gets very hot when there's power being fed to them. So I'm going to go ahead and feed a 1500 hertz signal into the microphone and let's take a look at what the um, signal that's coming out of the bandpass filter. With a 1500 hertz tone being fed into the uh, microphone this is the spectrum that uh, that's output from the bandpass filter and you'll see there's one uh, quite prominent peak here and there's a second little peak here which is a little bit troubling. So I've set the markers here so marker 1 is a 7.1 megahertz signal which is um, the RF that's coming out so that results from the uh, signal that's being passed through the crystal filter the 4.9 megahertz uh, signal mixed with the 12 megahertz local oscillator uh, will generate 7.1 uh, megahertz so that's a signal we want to see coming out of the uh, spectrum uh, is coming out of the bandpass filter, but we're seeing a 7.63 megahertz signal that's present, so that's a little bit troubling. Now it is down from the uh, peak here, it's down about 40 dB down, so it's, uh, it's down a substantial amount, but still it's troubling why that uh, peak is there, because it should not be there. Not sure if that's coming from one of the harmonics of the um, tone or one of the harmonics from the square wave generator, but it's about 500 kilohertz uh, away, you know, 400, almost 500 kilohertz away from the, uh, the 7.1 megahertz signal. So that signal's a little bit troubling where that's coming from.